you incredibly awesome sauce person. Thank you for clicking on this video and wondering why I paint. Well, that actually all starts when my daughter was about three and a half years old. She was diagnosed with hip dysplasia and surgery, body cast, removal, recovery, repeat, quickly became the reality of our life. Um, from the point that she was diagnosed with hip dysplasia to her first surgery was three weeks. Um, as you can imagine, that is not a lot of time. Um, me and my wife, we had, we were faced with so much to do at that point. Um, for one, learning what this was all about. And when we Google it, for the most part, you get information about dogs. At least you did at the time. There wasn't a lot of information. Um, that we were just renters, uh, so there are the house that we lived in, the floor itself was in really bad shape. And I'm like, oh, I need to change this floor. My daughter's going to be in a cast, which means she's going to be up close to this thing. It, I, I have to do something. Go to Home Depot. Um, find out flooring was very expensive. Um, so me and my wife, we actually went and spoke to the manager at Home Depot, explained our situation. And, you know, um, they just, they absolutely blew our mind. They were incredibly kind. They gave us enough flooring to cover the main living space of our house that we would be using at an incredibly discounted rate, something that we would be able to afford. And then I had friends and family come in and help me change the floor in this house that I was simply a renter of. Um, you know, and, and then so we got all these things that we're trying to deal, plus the emotion of it all. Like we, it was, it was devastating. Uh, I remember driving. From, from call to call, I'm a roofing serviceman, and I was driving from call to call, just, just crying, just bawling my eyes out, get to the call, to pull myself together, sunglasses, talk to the homeowner, figure out the problem, go on the roof, I'm crying, doing the repair. Like, the three weeks was an incredibly uh, hard time in our life. We were faced with a tough decision. One of us, my wife or myself, was going to need to stop working because somebody needed to be with our child 24-7, and it was going to be one of us um you know so that was a tough decision and the decision that was made was that my wife would take the first year off and then i would take the following half a year to three quarters of a year until we got through the entire process um you know so now only three weeks bang all of a sudden we're, we're there it's it's surgery time it's it's the day one of surgery and believe it or not my wife is is uh the strong one in the family uh, so when my daughter went in to go for the surgery and went to get put under, uh, my, my wife went in and I'm incredibly grateful that she did because she, she didn't have a great experience, um, which was not fun. Um, meanwhile, she comes out and then for the next seven, eight hours while well, my daughter's going through the surgery and I'm just sitting in the waiting room while I'm holding her giant stuffed monkey, uh, bawling my eyes out like the whole time. I just, I just can't wait for, for my daughter to come out, right? So the doctors come out and they go, okay, so the, everything went really well. We've got great news. We forgot to give the antibiotics before and after the surgery. And we're like, oh my God, what does that mean? Um, so they, they said, well, it just means we're going to have to stay in the hospital for an extra for an extra period of time. So we were in there for about three and a half days um, to make sure that she didn't have any kind of an infection or a fever or anything like that um, come out of it. So we're there in the, in the hospital for a period of time. And, and my daughter the whole time um, did not even smile. Uh, it, it wasn't until day three, we had friends and family come over. They brought some balloons and we were like, started to play keep up in the, in the room with the balloon and my daughter cracks a smile and then she giggles. Um, that moment was incredibly beautiful. It was, it was one of the most beautiful moments in my life to see her all of a sudden smile was fantastic. Um, Every time I try to go through these stories, I relive this stuff, so it becomes very emotional for me. Um, you know, so, so now she's gone through the hospital, gone through the surgery, we're sent home um, to figure out what our new norm is. What's our new normal, um, right? So as we're going home, we had people who lived downstairs who become, became very good friends of ours. Um, my wife had given them access to the house and she prepped me just before we were, we were walking in the door. Um, they had come in and decorated our entire house with these beautiful flowers and and all this colorful they just they made the environment very beautiful for my daughter to come home to 
And it was an incredibly kind gesture. It actually meant a lot to to our family. It was uh, it was very surprising, um, you know. But you know, then life sets in. We're home with a with a child in a body cast, going through, who just went through this major surgery for hip dysplasia. We're all it's all still a very big learning process. Um, you know, you've got to start setting alarms all of a sudden. You, you got your your. Your child who needs medication at certain times, you they're in a body cast, so you have to you have to through the night you have to set an alarm for every three to four hours to turn your child in the body cast at the very least the three to four hour mark mm -hmm. to prevent body sores. Um, there's something called drop foot in for the leg leg that's in the cast. It it wants to hang, so you have to prop that foot up with pillows on a constant to prevent a future problem. Um, there, there's a lot to do and you start to become sleep deprived. So anybody who's ever going through anything like this, me and my wife, we started to take a logbook of when she got her medication, what the, do the amount of the dosage was, when she got flipped, um, every single thing that we had to deal with, we wrote it down and time logged everything. Because you imagine you start to get sleep deprived and then you're like, but oh, when was the last dosage? And we like panic, go back to the book and it's like, oh, it was an hour ago. And we're like, oh my God, okay, we can we can relax. We don't have to do something like medicine-wise for another three hours. So it's like, um, if you go through anything like this, my, I, we highly suggest you use a logbook. It's incredibly important. Uh, so now, you know, now I'm working still, right? My wife is spending 24-7 with my daughter. I'm trying to keep her occupied, trying to play. I'm at work. All I can think about is what's happening at home. Um, so art... Uh, arts and crafts, dolls, uh, educational video games, coloring, all this stuff became like really, 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 really mainstream, constant, 24-7. Imagine your child is pretty stationary. You have to, to be there. Like a lot of parents can just let your kid play while you go do what you got to do. It's not the same. You got to prevent your, that your child from, who's already experiencing a terrible and, you know, it's a terrible situation. You've got to do everything you can do to prevent it from, from being and feeling worse. Um, you know, so art was actually one of those things. So I'm, I, I come home and, and we're playing these dolls. My wife would play these Monster High dolls with her all day long, and so would I. Um, and they were new in the scene, so they didn't have any furniture. Um, so I was inspired to build this bunk bed for some of her dolls. And then I built that piece of furniture, this piece of furniture, this little desk. And then I actually built a um, dollhouse to go around the furniture. Uh, and that became this painting style. I started to paint with her. So when my daughter had the, their first cast removed, uh, we started to paint this painting. Because as I'm, I'm at work... Um, my daughter has the cast removed. I all I can feel at this point is gratitude. I am so incredibly. We've gone through one surgery still, and I'm feeling so incredibly grateful for how things have gone thus far. Um, like I said, there's not a lot of information, so we are corresponding with other parents. And going into this, my daughter was on the worst case scenario side of things, and as we went through this. We didn't suffer any of the problems or nearly any of the complications that some of the other families did who weren't in as severe as a situation. So, like, you find the silver lining. We're incredibly grateful um, for how our situation was going. And all I could I want to do was find a way to kind of give back and be grateful. So me and my daughter started painting this painting to donate to sick kids. Um, maybe they would hang it in the hospital. Maybe they would auction it off and sell it, make some money, and that would benefit the hospital. Fantastic. Um, you, you know, it, it's it's funny how things go because this one painting actually turned into a series of 12 paintings. That 12 paintings has turned into a book. That book and paintings have turned into products, all that I'm giving to charity, two more charity projects in, in the works, um, all that I'm trying to give to charity because I just want to give back. Um, so why do I paint? This is why I paint. This is actually a piece of my daughter's cast uh, from when she was going through it. These are the hip the bracelets that support hip dysplasia. I've actually been wearing these things for eight years now. 
This is the hardware that is in the leg. It's not the actual hardware that was in my daughter's leg because the hospital won't give you that. Uh, but the doctor was kind enough to give me a sample of what they actually use so that I, I had a visual and mental image of what was actually in my daughter. Uh, you know, any parents who've been to sick kids and gone through something, you know these red badges. So this is actually a picture of my daughter in her cast on that floor that I spoke about changing. Um, you know, why do I paint? I, I paint because of something that in, I, in, at the time, in the moment, was one of the worst things I'd ever dealt with in my life. And from a negative has grown an incredible positive that has the potential to help so many other people. Um, so that's why I paint. I paint because of my little girl and an experience in life. Um, so... To any of you who have actually sat through this entire video listening and understanding why I paint, thank you. You are pure awesome sauce. You are amazing. Um, please go to DSTARS, click that link, go to DSTAR ID and click follow. Your support really helps. All the support that we can get continues to raise awareness about these projects, which will then eventually start to actually help and make money, raise money for certain charities. Awesome sauce. Um, also, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, um, DSTAR, all lowercase, DSTAR ID. I love each and every one of you. Thank you so much. You're amazing.